Hello, my name is Bartholomew, and this is Get Me Out of Here, the show where we visit the world's greatest, most difficult, hardest escape rooms, and talk to the experts who conquer them. Let's see where we're going today. In today's show, we'll be going inside the... Of the belly of a fish. Really, guys? You gotta do me like that? Here we are inside the belly of a fish. The biggest fish I've ever seen, but it's still pretty cramped in here. There's hardly any room to move around. In my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. Did you hear that? What was that? By the depths of the grave, I called for help. There it is again. Hello? Who's there? Hi, aren't you performing you that talk show house? Fancy me and you inside of a fish. Fancy me anyone inside a fish. According to my note cards, you must be Jonah. Well, yes I am. And how long have you been inside of this fish? It's hard if you track the time inside a fish, but uh, probably three days. How did you end up here? Oh, you know, same old story. Man talks to God. God tells man to go to Nineveh. Man goes on boat to go to Tarship instead. Storm comes. Sailors throw man overboard. And then I get swallowed by a fish. My, my. And what have you been doing to get out of this fish? I've just been praying. And mostly thanking God. Thanking God? Yes, God had a plan for me to go to Nineveh. But I wanted to do things my own way instead. Now I can see God's way is the best way. Whatever happens, I'm thanking God for his goodness and for his plan. If I ever get the opportunity again, I'm definitely going to follow God's plan. On that note, that's all the time we have for Get Me Out of Here. Join us next time when we visit another escape room. And hopefully tomorrow's escape room won't be quite as smelly. Do you know who would do a really good job of getting out of an escape room? Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes is a detective. He's a master of finding clues and solving cases. And Sherlock Holmes always carries around one of these. This is a magnifying glass. When you look through it, the thing you're looking at becomes larger and easier to see. This can be very helpful when you're searching for clues. God has a plan for you and God has a plan for me. We may believe that, but we have a hard time knowing what the plan is because we can't see it. It would be great if we had a spiritual magnifying glass that made it easier to see what God's plan is. Well, guess what? We do, it is right here. The Bible is God's word and it's a major way that God speaks to us. We can talk to God with our words and each day we can pray and say, God, what do you want to show me today? Then, get this you guys, we can crack open our Bible and read what it says and see what God has to say to us. He will show us his plan. It might just be a small piece of his plan, like honor your mother and father. Or it might be a big piece of the plan, like go and make disciples of all nations. But we can trust that God will lead us if we are willing to obey him. The pieces of the plan for your life are right in here. So get out that magnifying glass, your Bible, and look for those clues. Remember, God has a plan for me, and God has a plan for you. Phew! Oh my gracious. Oh. Bible man here. I just crawled out of the belly of that big, disgusting, smelly fish. Get your Bible memory verse. Do you want to know what it says? I hope so. Here it is. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. Colossians 1 13. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. <sighs> I don't know about you. But I gotta go back to the Bible man cave and take a bath because I smell like a rotten fish. Join us See ya. Animated Adventures of Bible Man. Woo! All right, you guys, we're halfway through our kids' church lesson today, which means it's time to worship Jesus. All right.
one of yeah. us. Yeah. But in order for us to follow that plan, yeah. we have to break out of disobedience. Yeah. Are you ready to go learn about how Jonah broke out of disobedience? Yeah. All right, let's go. Ready? Yeah. Okay, woo. Yay. Do any of you know what an escape room is? Have any of you done one? In an escape room, they lock you and your friends in a room. You have an hour or so to break out of the room. There are clues to find and puzzles to solve. They'll help you find your way out. Whoa! Today, we have something to escape. Our mission is not so much to escape a room, but to escape the ordinary. God has an extraordinary life planned for each person, but many times we're stuck in our own little ordinary worlds. Here, we're going to learn how to break out of the ordinary and into the extraordinary. It all starts with God's plan. God has a plan for each of us. God has a plan for me, and God has a plan for you. Today, we're gonna learn about a man named Jonah and the plan God had for him. If we follow God's plan, we can break out of the extraordinary. How do we escape from the ordinary to the extraordinary? The first thing you have to do is realize how to accept that God has a plan for you. God has a plan for me and God has a plan for each of you. The ordinary thing to do is for me to go my own way. But if I break out of the ordinary and follow God's plan, I escape into the extraordinary. God had a plan for Jonah. God spoke to Jonah. He said, the city of Nineveh is very wicked. None of them follow me. They each go their own way. I want you to go to Nineveh and tell them to change their ways. What would Jonah do? Would he follow God's plan and go to Nineveh? Or would he go his own way? Let's find out. There was once a prophet named Jonah who sent messages from God to the people of the land. One day, God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. Nineveh was a land where people did awful, sinful things, but God wanted Jonah to tell them about him. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. He decided he would run away. He got on a boat with some sailors and ran away to Tarshish. While on the boat, God sent a storm. Jonah told the sailors to throw him overboard so the storm would stop because Jonah knew that it was God. After Jonah was thrown into the sea, the storm stopped and God sent a big fish to swallow Jonah. Jonah was in the fish for three days and three nights. He prayed and thanked God while he was in the dark, smelly fish. On the third day, God commanded the fish to spit Jonah out. God sent Jonah to Nineveh again, and Jonah obeyed. The people of Nineveh listened and began to follow God. The first thing Jonah had to do to lead other people to God was break out of his disobedience. had a plan for Jonah. Go to Nineveh and tell the people about God. It's a part of God's plan that everybody knows about him. Those who know God, like Jonah did, have a responsibility to tell others. But Jonah did not want to do things God's way. So he went his own way. And we see where that got him. Inside the belly of a fish. Jonah was inside the fish for three days. I'm sure it was pretty dark and cramped and smelly in there. He was trapped. There was no way to break out of that fish. Jonah had plenty of time in that fish to think about what he had done. He realized that he had been wrong to go his own way and not follow God's plan. Jonah prayed to God. He thanked and praised God. God commanded the fish to spit Jonah onto land. Later in the story, God comes to Jonah again and asks him to go to Nineveh and tell the people about him. What do you think Jonah did? This time, Jonah followed God's plan. He went God's way, and because of it, the entire city of Nineveh learned about God and put their faith in God and were saved from destruction. God may not speak to you the way he spoke to Jonah, but God still speaks. He speaks to us through his word, the Bible. Reading the Bible is a great way to learn what God's plan is. God speaks in other ways too. He speaks to our hearts and minds by his Holy Spirit. He can even speak to us through wise people. The ordinary thing to do is to go my own way. When I commit to things God's way and follow his plan, I break out of the ordinary. And God leads me to do the extraordinary life that can only be found with him. Today, let's remember God has a plan for me. Bye, everybody. Welcome back to Trivia with Andy. 
Answer true or false to the following questions. God told Jonah to go to the city of Narnia. False. God told Jonah to go to Nineveh. Next question. Jonah disobeyed God. True. Jonah did not go to Nineveh when God told him to. Next question. God sent a storm that threatened the ship that Jonah was in. True. God has a plan for you and me. True. The first step in following God's plan is breaking out of disobedience. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining me with Trivia with Andy. Woo! Hi, guys. I hope you enjoyed our kids' church lesson today. Before we go, I just want to go over our Bible memory verse with you and pray together. Our Bible memory verse for this week is, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. Colossians 1.13 Let's say it again. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. Colossians 1.13 13. Be sure to check out our Make It Stick page. You can find the link in the description or you can go to this link right here. Okay, let's pray together. Father God, thank you, Lord, that you always have a plan for us and your plan for us is always good. Lord, help each one of us to break out of our disobedience so that we can follow your perfect plan for us. Lord, I pray that all my friends this week have a great and fun week and that everybody has a safe week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, go out there and have an 